I'd like to call the Health and Human Services and Aging Committee to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Pardon the roll, Ms. Conwell? Here. Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones is absent at the moment. Ms. Brown? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Ms. Stevens? Ms. Stevens is absent at the moment. We have a quorum. All right. Anyone signed in for public comment? No, no one is signed in. All right. Uh, approval of the minutes from the January 16th, 2019 meeting. Can I have a motion? And second, all in favor say aye. 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 Meetings are approved. Madam Clerk, if you could please read the uh, matter into the record. Resolution number 2019-0049, making an award on requisition number 42489 to the Metro Health System in the amount not to exceed $850,000 for comprehensive medical services for families involved with the Division of Children and Family Services for the period 1-1-2019 to December 31st, 2019. Thank you. Good afternoon, Bob. Excuse me, can you turn the mic on, please? Thank you. Oh, Bob Nath um, from the Department of Health and Human Services on behalf of the Division of Children and Family Services. Good afternoon. Um, we're recommending a contract to Metro Health Medical Center in the amount of $850,000 to provide comprehensive medical services to children and families referred by the Department of Children and Family Services. The objectives of this, of this contract are fivefold to improve health access for children and youth that are in county custody, to reduce safety risks for these children, to establish care coordination through consultation and counseling for children and youth who have been pres prescribed psychotropic medications, to provide linkages for youth aging out of foster care system, and to comply with standards of, for preventive and follow-up visits for physical and behavioral health care set by the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Ohio Administrative Code. There are three components that comprise this service. The first component is something we call medical screening and assessments. It's available to, for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to provide pre-placement screening and assessment of health needs of children and youth that are in DCFS custody. Children will also receive appropriate preventive and follow-up health care visits as medically indicated. Also included in the screening is hearing and vision screening and age-appropriate developmental and behavioral health screenings, and if recommended, a referral to the Child Adolescent Psychology Department over at Metro Health. For youth aging out of foster care, they will also schedule what we so refer to as an introduction appointment um, with the health care provider to serve as a link to provide the youth with an opportunity to establish an ongoing relationship with the uh, primary care physician as they age out of the foster care system. The second component is something called psychotropic medication consultation. This, services, this service consists of consultation and counseling for children and youth who, who are also in the custody of DCFS and are taking prescribed psychotropic medications. Metro staff will engage and discuss with the prescribing psychiatrist <coughs> and or physician a mutually agreed upon treatment plan or medication regimen, regimen for the child. Consultation for this service will occur under several circumstances. One, when a child is on three or more medications. When a child is five years old and younger and is on medication. Or at any time when staff become concerned with the child's current psychotropic medication regimen. And they provide that consultation. The third component is drug testing and toxicology services. Drug testing is conducted on caregivers of the children as well as anyone in the home suspected of using drugs. DCS requires us to ensure child safety, reduce risks of, to children, and hopefully to improve health outcomes going forward. Um, so that's the substance of, of this contract. Um, I trust, if I can, you'll, uh, you may ask kind of why is this contract coming before you at this point in time, since the you know, services, the con last contract ended. Um, I'm only assuming you will ask that question. You know. um, this, this service was competitively procured via an RFP. Um, it was issued in April of 2018, and it closed in May 25th of 2018. Uh, we only received one response, which was from Metro. However, that being said, we still do our due diligence reviewing the response to ensure that it met all the deliverables, deliverables as it was addressed in the RFP because we generally don't recommend a provider by default. So we still go through that same process. 
Um, that being said, you know, we had, we had ongoing meetings with Metro to discuss the proposal. Um, and once we decided to recommend them, uh, there was another, there were other discussions um, that ensued about the specifics of the contract. Um, we get, the contract was provided to Metro in August, the 21st of 18. Um, but then um, it, we gave it to them for signature. But the number of questions surfaced in terms of some of the language, um, the legal language, um, the dollar value, and those contracts were ongoing. Our law department obviously was, was, was involved with uh, Metro's legal staff. Um, by time, you know, modifications were mutually agreed upon, the contract wasn't returned to us with their signature until um, January 8th, um, at which time we immediately submitted for processing and introduction to council. And that's why we're here now. All right, uh, Mr. Maff, I have a question. Is the $850,000 enough? Um, this contract since the, according to the numbers of children in placement are going up? Uh, we anticipate that probably won't be enough when the money was allocated based upon historical. That was the money that was allocated out of this budget for the service. Um, in the past, uh, those dollars were not enough to cover all the services. And during the course of the year, we mended out on several different occasions, if you recall, um, to keep the contract full in order for them to continue to provide services. Um, the $850,000 now, um, in all likelihood, to be perfectly candid, it probably will not be enough to cover us through the balance of the calendar year, um, and at which point then we'll have to sit down, look at the budget, and if we have additional dollars, amend those dollars to continue providing these services. Okay. And is Metro fulfilling the contract requirements according to DCFS? If I can, I'd like to introduce our staff from DCFS. If I can, maybe Karen. Um, they're more involved in the you know, day to day, uh, you, know, you know, the operations of the, you know, Good afternoon, members of council. My name is Karen Storman with D the Division of Children and Family Services. And um, to address your question, Councilman Conwell, yes, Metro meets the demand of DCFS. It, um, they accommodate children coming into care 24 hours a day, seven days a week to meet the requirements of the Ohio Administrative Code to ensure that children are physically examined prior to being placed in an out of home setting. Um, the other components of the contract as well in terms of toxicology and second opinions for children on psychotropic medications. Um, the referrals are sent to Metro, their process facilitated and assigned accordingly. Okay, and, and just to follow up to uh, Mr. Maff's uh, question, he stated, uh, or his statement, he stated that drug testing is done on the caregivers. Is it also done on the child when they come in for the... Generally speaking, toxicology services aren't done unless there is a presenting problem or the child appears to be under the influence. Um, our children coming into care, of course, are between the ages of zero and 18. Okay. So oftentimes that isn't an issue, but if the child is presenting at the point of triage in which a screen is needed, then yes, the screen would be administered. But most often the toxicology services that Metro um, provides for the agency are to determine sobriety of the caregivers in hopes that children can return to home to a safe environment. I mentioned this uh, before in, a, in another committee probably some years ago um, because our the way the law is set up, we, we do drug testing for the actual biological parents but we, we do not mandate for foster care parents to go through that same sobriety check. So it's just, it's just a little discrepancy out there. I'm just trying to move toward uh, being equitable on that because we do have some foster parents that um, have some issues. So I'm going to open it up to my committee members. Sure. Dale? Madam Chair, Mr. Math, uh, how long have we had this particular contract and has it always been with Metro? Um, you know, through the chair, you know, Councilman Miller, this contract has always been with Metro. Um, and uh, the contract was initially entered into Metro in, um, it was a two year contract in 2015. 16? 13? 
2013, sorry. Okay. And uh, what was the dollar amount for the contract last year, and, uh, and what was the total dollar amount after any additions were, were added that took place during the course of the year? Um, the last contract, um, the original, the original two-year contract was $1.3 million. So we aver it was averaging about $1.1 million per year. This past year, we amended it um, for at four different occasions for different services for a total of $800,000 approximately. So on an average, the, you know, it's been, we've been expensing about $1.1 million. Let's try that again. Right. I, I, that, didn't, that didn't add up in my mind. So last year, the original amount that we approved for the contract was how much, and how much more did we add to that during the course of the year? Um, the original contract was a two-year contract. It was for $1.3 million. Oh, okay. So, um, so it was... And then we added $850,000 to the contract, so the total value became $2.2 2 from 2017 through 2019. So, so that... 2018 to so, 2018. So it, it's average $1.1 million per year. Correct. Okay. So... Instead of 1.3 million, th this year we're uh, we're up to 850 thousand for a single year. Why are we doing just one year rather than two years? Um, uh, through the chair, Council Miller, we just you know most of our RFPs we've been issuing for one year with option years to mm -hmm. amend, so it gives us the flexibility to make any changes we need without going through a formal process. And and initially the. When we, when we did the RFP, you know, back in the last spring, um, we were told to allocate $850,000 for the service. So that's why. And is there any change to the scope of services compared to the prior contract? Um, no changes at all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Councilwoman Brown. Thank you. Um, my question is, if at all, can you provide a breakdown for the um, five services as, you know, how they will be allocated to each um, category? And the other question that I had is, this is um, state, is it state funding? Are we being reimbursed? I see the, um, it says it's funded by the state child protection all allocation. So is this a reimbursement or how does that work? Yes, we draw down, Walter, if you want to answer that, I'll, I'll refer to our ex-CFO, who has both first-hand knowledge. Good afternoon. It's funded 100% by SCPA, the State Child Protective Allocation. It's federal funds. Well, I'm sorry, it's state funds drawn down from the federal government. Thank you. So just wanted to follow up on that, Walter, before you sit down. Uh, so uh, I knew that it was from the state allocation fund. So how does that, can you just walk us through how we do that? Do we pay Metro up front and then we reimburse or? We do, we pay Metro up front. We're reimbursed quarterly in, from the children's services side of the house. I'm sorry, when I say children's services, I mean the public children's services um, agency account with the state of Ohio. Okay, and so uh, you said it, it's does the state play a role in uh, in determining what the dollar amount would be that we would give Metro? No, they don't. Okay. Any other questions? All right. On that. If um, we're basing it off of our historicals and we know that we've been averaging 1.1 million a year, then is there a particular reason why we're asking for less if they have no cap or stipulations relative to the dollar figure? We're, we're limited by what we were budgeted at the county level. We were budgeted 850000 Uh Soon you'll see an adjustment coming through for approval through the finance and budget uh, where we actually drew down $3 million more um, in state federal funding through the public assistance side, we're going to use 200000 of that to do an amendment to this contract in the future, next couple months. And are so, there any, oh, I'm sorry, are there any administrative fees relative to these agreements? 
to this contract, mm -hmm. the Metro Health contract? Mm -hmm. I don't believe so. Okay, thank you. So when you draw down the 200,000, I think we uh, just uh, discussed this a little bit. You would need to come before council for that amendment, would you? To have it appropriated in the county budget, we would. Okay, thank you. Go right ahead. All right, thank you, Councilman McConwell. Um, the since we've now increased our historicals, if this were to come back before us, when this come back comes back before us, we'll be able to increase that ask and the budget amount. We will the next the next biennial budget. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you. So hopefully that we will ask for the appropriate amount. Uh, was Metro, did Metro have any problems with this, uh, this amount? Because you said that the contract was with them from the beginning, so they've actually lost money in doing this contract, right? Um, I don't believe they lost money okay. in the process. Okay, it's just what we budgeted for. Correct. Okay, correct. So when we amended, and how many times have we amended since they've had the contract? Four times, Councilman. Okay. And I will. So we should know that going forward that, or, or what the rate is. Um, do we know, um, you're planning on, Walter, you stated to go up 200,000 because we still haven't met the cap of the the 1.3 that they're, they're used to. The 200,000 is what Metro requested for this year. Okay. But that's on the old, you know, on the old budget. I'm just assuming with the new kids coming in, wouldn't it be more than 200,000? Potentially, yeah, it could go up higher. Okay, so I just wanna put that out there on the record that it won't necessarily just be 200, it might be more. Correct. Okay, thank you. Just a comment. Councilman Miller? That the average for the last two years, was it, it was a total of 2.1 million over two years, which is 1 million and 50,000. So if we, uh, if we do the 850,000 and we add 200,000, it would bring us to about the same level as, as, as we had for the last two years. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add or share? I think that should cover it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion to move R2019-0049. Do we need second reading suspension? Um, Council, Council Chair Conwell, if we could, and then if we could, you uh, know, under we second could process reading. invoices to Metro a little sooner then. All right. Under second reading suspension, uh, to the full council, can I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any miscellaneous business? Thank you. You're welcome. You. Hearing none, we're adjourned. Okay.